Let's start the story exactly from where it started, the Wallace Line. Let's understand what Wallace Line is. The Wallace Line is an imaginary boundary proposed by the 19th century British naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace. It marks a significant biogeographical division in Southeast Asia, separating the faunal regions of Australia from those of Asia. Here is a detailed history of how the Wallace Line was identified. 1. Discovery by Alfred Russell Wallace In the mid-19th century, Alfred Russell Wallace conducted extensive fieldwork in the Malay Archipelago, now Indonesia. 1. He observed distinct differences in the animal species on either side of what would later become known as the Wallace Line. 2. Faunal Differences Wallace noticed that to the west of the line, the animal species were more closely related to those found in Asia, while to the east of the line, the species were more similar to those in Australia. 2. This stark contrast in the fauna led him to propose the existence of a biogeographical boundary. 3. Publication. In 1869, Wallace published a paper titled, The Malay Archipelago, where he described his observations and introduced the concept of the Wallace Line. 3. He presented it as a clear division between two distinct faunal regions. 4. Scientific validation. Wallace's observations and proposal of the Wallace Line were later validated by further research in the field of biogeography and evolutionary biology. 4. The line is now widely accepted as a significant biogeographical boundary. Then the story gets interesting turn when I come across the following paragraph. The Wallace Line is one of several imaginary lines that demarcate boundaries between distinct biogeographical regions, each characterized by its unique set of flora and fauna. Here are some other lines similar to the Wallace Line. Before knowing what are the other lines please like share and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for more interesting and different content. 1. Weber's Line Weber's Line, also known as the Weber Line, is another boundary that separates the faunal regions of Southeast Asia and Australia. 1. It is located east of the Wallace Line and is named after the Dutch botanist Max Carl Wilhelm Weber. 2. Huxley's Line Huxley's Line, proposed by biologist Thomas Henry Huxley, is an alternative boundary that separates the zoogeographical regions of Southeast Asia and Australia. 2. It is slightly different from the Wallace Line in its specific location. 3. Lidecker's Line. Lidecker's Line, named after British zoologist Richard Lidecker, is yet another biogeographical boundary separating species between Southeast Asia and Australia. 3. It is positioned east of the Wallace Line. These lines are significant in understanding the distribution of species and the impact of historical factors, such as sea level changes and land connections, on the evolution and distribution of flora and fauna in the region. They help explain why certain species are found in one area but not in the other due to historical isolation and differing environmental conditions. These biogeographical lines collectively contribute to our understanding of the complex interplay between geography, geology, and evolution in shaping the natural world. Weber's Line, also known as Weber's Demarcation Line, is a biogeographical boundary that separates two distinct regions in Southeast Asia based on differences in species distribution. Here's a brief overview of Weber's Line, its geography, and environmental differences. Weber's Line Geography 1. Weber's Line is located in Southeast Asia, specifically in the eastern part of the Malay Archipelago. 2. It runs through the region between the islands of Bali and Lombok, which are part of Indonesia. Environmental Differences 1. Species Distribution Like the Wallace Line, Weber's Line marks a significant transition in species distribution. 1. To the west of Weber's Line, you find species of Asian origin, while to the east, there is a higher prevalence of species with Australian affinities. 1. This difference in species composition is due to historical factors such as land connections and isolation caused by rising sea levels. 2. Geological history. Weber's line is a product of geological history. 2. During periods of lower sea levels, land bridges connected some of the islands in this region, allowing for the movement of species. 2. However, as sea levels rose, these land connections were submerged, leading to isolation and the development of distinct faunal regions. 3. Climate. There can be variations in climate between the two sides of Weber's line. 3. 
The western side, influenced by its proximity to the Asian mainland, may have a climate more typical of Southeast Asia, including tropical rainforests. 3. The eastern side may exhibit different climatic patterns. 4. Biodiversity. Each side of Weber's line has its unique biodiversity due to isolation and historical factors. 4. This includes differences in the types of animals and plants found in the region. In summary, Weber's line, like the Wallace line, is an important biogeographical boundary that highlights the environmental and species differences between two regions in Southeast Asia. It provides valuable insights into the complex interplay of geography, geology, and evolution in shaping the natural world in this part of the world. Huxley's Line, also known as Huxley's Modified Line or Huxley's Line of Wallace, is a biogeographical boundary that separates two distinct regions in Southeast Asia based on differences in species distribution. Here's an overview of Huxley's Line, its geography, and environmental differences. Huxley's Line Geography 1. Huxley's Line is situated in Southeast Asia, specifically in the Malay Archipelago. 2. It is located to the east of the Wallace Line and runs through the region between the islands of Bali and Lombok, which are part of Indonesia. Environmental Differences 1. Species Distribution Similar to the Wallace Line, Huxley's Line marks a significant transition in species distribution. 1. To the west of Huxley's Line, you find species of Asian origin, while to the east, there is a higher prevalence of species with Australian affinities. 1. This difference in species composition is due to historical factors such as land connections and isolation caused by rising sea levels. 2. Geological history. Huxley's line, like other biogeographical boundaries in the region, is a product of geological history. 2. During periods of lower sea levels, land bridges connected some of the islands west of Huxley's line to the Asian mainland, allowing for the exchange of species. 2. As sea levels rose, these land connections were submerged, leading to isolation and the development of distinct faunal regions. 3. Climate. There can be variations in climate between the two sides of Huxley's line. 3. The western side, influenced by its proximity to the Asian mainland, may have a climate more typical of Southeast Asia, including tropical rainforests. 3. The eastern side may exhibit different climatic patterns. 4. Biodiversity. Each side of Huxley's line has its unique biodiversity due to isolation and historical factors. 4. This includes differences in the types of animals and plants found in the region. In summary, Huxley's line is another important biogeographical boundary in Southeast Asia that underscores the environmental and species differences between two regions. It reflects the complex interplay of geography, geology, and evolution that has shaped the natural world in this part of the world. Lidecker's Line, also known as Lidecker's Line of Faunal Division, is a biogeographical boundary in Southeast Asia that separates two distinct regions based on differences in species distribution. Here's an overview of Lidecker's Line, its geography, and environmental differences. Lidecker's Line Geography 1. Lidecker's Line is located in Southeast Asia, specifically within the Malay Archipelago. 2. It runs through the region between the islands of Bali and Lombok, which are part of Indonesia, similar to the location of other biogeographical lines in the region like the Wallace Line and Huxley's Line. Environmental Differences 1. Species Distribution Lidecker's Line marks a significant transition in species distribution. 1. To the west of Lidecker's line, you find species of Asian origin, while to the east, there is a higher prevalence of species with Australian affinities. 1. This difference in species composition is a result of historical factors such as land connections and isolation due to rising sea levels. 2. Geological history. Like other biogeographical lines in the region, Lidecker's line is a product of geological history. 2. During periods of lower sea levels, land bridges connected some of the islands west of Lidecker's line to the Asian mainland, allowing for the exchange of species. 2. As sea levels rose, these land connections were submerged, leading to isolation and the development of distinct faunal regions. 3. Climate. There can be variations in climate between the two sides of Lidecker's line. 3. The western side, influenced by its proximity to the Asian mainland, 
may have a climate more typical of Southeast Asia, including tropical rainforests. 3. The eastern side may exhibit different climatic patterns. 4. Biodiversity. Each side of Lidecker's line has its unique biodiversity due to isolation and historical factors. 4. This includes differences in the types of animals and plants found in the region. In summary, Lidecker's line is another significant biogeographical boundary in Southeast Asia that highlights the environmental and species differences between two regions. It underscores the complex interplay of geography, geology, and evolution that has shaped the natural world in this part of the world, similar to other biogeographical lines in the region. Hope you like my effort and will share with your family and friends and ask them to like share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.